Let's discuss resolution. Resolution is generally a measure of how close two reflectors can be and still be resolved. The three kinds of resolution we'll discuss today are axial, which is how close reflectors can be and still be resolved in the near field to far field axis, lateral, which is how close reflectors can be in the leading edge to receding edge axis, and elevational resolution, which is how thick is the slice of image that you are looking through at this moment in time. Let's start with axial. Again, this is a measure of how close two reflectors can be and still be resolved in the near field to far field axis. It's considered a measure of how crisp the image is. This can be tested in multiple ways. The first is to take a phantom with a very thin hyperechoic line and then measure the thickness of this thin line. The thickness of it is the axial resolution because the line is much thinner than you can resolve. So the minimum width it will be given is the resolution. Another way is to have successively closer very small targets. So for example you could have two reflectors that are about two millimeters away, then two reflectors that are about a millimeter away, then one that's 0 0.75 millimeters away, then one which is 0 0.5 millimeters away, and so on. And then you measure the distance between the two closest reflectors that you can resolve. And this is also going to be the axial resolution. How about lateral resolution? Recall that lateral resolution depends on how wide the beam is. The way we measure this is very similar to the thin line approach for measuring axial resolution. Here you have a point-like reflector or a thin line reflector that's oriented vertically. And in the field, you'll measure the thickness from left to right, or in the leading edge to receding edge axis of the point. Remember that this resolution will decrease with increased depth, because the deeper you are, the wider your beam is. So you need to measure this at a variety of different depths. Also recall that this one, because of attenuation as you get deeper into the tissue, must, must, must be done with consistent power and gain, or your answer will vary from time to time. Finally, let's talk about slice thickness resolution. This is also known as elevational resolution. This is consistently the worst resolution. Why is that? Recall that previously we discussed focusing. We can usually only adjust focus or change focus using an array and electronic focusing techniques. Also recall that we use one horizontal row of piezoelectric elements to do this focusing. That gives us relatively good control of focus in the axial and in the horizontal directions. However, as there are no elements at different elevations, we cannot do anything about slice thickness. This one is also significantly more complicated to measure as you can see starting in the next slide. To measure this, we use a phantom which has reflectors arranged at a 45 degree angle from one end of the phantom to the other. You'll note this creates a diagonal line going all the way across the phantom. Over this, you place the ultrasound probe, oriented as you can see here. Look at the image we obtain. You see a rectangle. If this slice was infinitely thin, if we had very, very, very good slice thickness, you would see a very small rectangle with a very small short axis in the near field to far field axis. If you were looking at a very bad slice thickness, you would see a very large rectangle. Think about that for a minute and you might get a better understanding of how this works to measure slice thickness. If you see it, the slice thickness being very thin would give you a slice with just a small portion of that reflector line diagonally down the phantom. If you have a very poor slice thickness, 
you'll capture a much larger portion of that line and so you'll see more of that rectangle on your screen. By measuring the thickness of that rectangular band, we get a determination of our slice thickness. Recall that the slice thickness varies throughout the field, narrowing at the focus and very much expanding past the focus. So you need to measure this at different depths, especially within the deep field. System sensitivity is basically a measure of how weak an echo signal you can still detect and display. We usually call it maximum system sensitivity when you measure the sensitivity with gain and power adjusted optimally for the phantom that you're using. This number is generally limited by electrical noise, some of which is generated by the receiver gain. Some of the other noise comes from the receiver amplifier. It can also come from poor shielding, so electrical activity just in the general area, and noise from electrical communication in the computer. The biggest concern when you're measuring this isn't the absolute sensitivity, but how the sensitivity changes over time. A lot of these causes come from general wear and tear, damage to trans the transducer if you drop it, or just general use, or cables, which are notorious for getting run over by a cartwheel. Some of this also comes from electronic drift, which is just the decay of your computer over time. The best way to look is comparison of multiple QA tests over time. The test that we use when you're looking at a phantom with this is called the maximum depth of visualization test. You optimize power and gain, you set the depth to as deep as possible, and you find the deepest place where you can still see the tissue-like texture in the phantom. You compare this number, how deep that is, over time. A change of more than a centimeter is really concerning. Remember to save the images so they can, can be compared. The final B-mode phantom I'd like to discuss today is a lesion detection phantom. Generally these consist of discrete targets of differing sizes, shapes, or echogenicities distributed in typical ultrasound phantom gel. These targets can be hyperechoic, anechoic, or hypoechoic. Because you can resolve these lesions from the rest of the ultrasound gel because of their contrast with the surrounding medium, this is also a type of test for contrast resolution. 